Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Friday, October 23rd, 2020. We celebrate the memorial of St. John of Capistrano, priest. I'm Deacon Dennis Holly from Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Richmond, Virginia. Before we begin, let us take a moment to recognize that we are in the presence of God. Let us begin as we begin all our prayers in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Our first psalm is Psalm 51, entitled, O God, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offense. O wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. My offenses, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Again, against you, you alone have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done? That you may be justified when you give sentence and be without reproach when you judge. O oh, see, in guilt I was born. A sinner was I conceived. Indeed, you love truth in the heart. Then in the secret of my heart, teach me wisdom. O oh, purify me, then I shall be clean. O oh, wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear rejoicing and gladness that the bones you have crushed may revive. From my sins, turn away your face and blot out all my guilt. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervor, sustain me, that I may teach transgressors your ways and sinners may return to you. O oh, rescue me, God, my helper, and my tongue shall ring out your goodness. O oh, Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. For in sacrifice you take no delight. For an offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humble, contrite heart you will not spurn. In your goodness show favor to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with lawful sacrifice, holocausts offered on your altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Father, he who knew no sin was made sin for us, to save us and restore us to your friendship. Look upon our contrite heart and afflicted spirit, and heal our troubled conscience, so that in the joy and strength of the Holy Spirit, we may proclaim your praise and glory before all the nations. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father. Our canticle this morning is taken from Isaiah. It's entitled, People of All Nations Will Become Disciples of the Lord. Truly with you God is hidden, the God of Israel, the Savior. Those are put to shame and disgrace who vent their anger against him. Those go in disgrace who carve images. Israel, you are saved by the Lord, saved forever. You shall never be put to shame or disgrace in future ages. For thus says the Lord, the creator of the heavens, who is God, the designer and maker of the earth, who established it, not creating it to be a waste, but designing it to be lived in. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I have not spoken from hiding, nor from some dark place of the earth. And I have not said to the descendants of Jacob, look for me in an empty waste. I, the Lord, promise justice. I foretell what is right. 
Come and assemble, gather together, you fugitives, from among the Gentiles. They are without knowledge, who bear wooden idols and pray to gods that cannot save. Come here and declare in council together, who announced this from the beginning and foretold it from of old? Was it not I, the Lord, besides whom there is no other God? There is no just and saving God but me. Turn to me and be safe, all you ends of the earth, for I am God, there is no other. By myself I swear, uttering my just decree and my unutterable word. To me every knee shall bend, by me every tongue shall swear, saying, Only in the Lord are just deeds and power. Before him in shame shall come all who vent their anger against him, and the Lord shall be the vindication and the glory of all the descendants of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let your light shine before men, that they may be, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father. God's word is alive. It strikes to the heart. It pierces more surely than a two-edged sword. Our second psalm is Psalm 100, entitled, The Joyful Song of Those Entering God's Temple. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us. We belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Go within his gates giving thanks. Enter his courts with songs of praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Indeed, how good is the Lord. Eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. With joy and gladness, we cry out to you, Lord, and ask you, open our hearts to sing your praises and announce your goodness and truth. God's word is alive. It strikes to the heart. It pierces more surely than a two-edged sword. Our reading this morning is taken from Hebrews Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider how their lives ended and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teaching. Blessed among us today is St. John of Capistrano, whose feast we celebrate. Imagine being born in the 14th century. One third of the population, and nearly 40% of the clergy were wiped out by the bubonic plague. The Western schism split the church with two or three claimants to the Holy See at one. England and France were at war. The city-states of Italy were constantly in conflict. No wonder that gloom dominated the spirit of the culture and the times. John Capistrano was born in 1386. His education was thorough. His talents and success were great. When he was 26, he was made governor of Perugia. Imprisoned after a battle against the Maltestas, he resolved to change his way of life completely. At the age of 30, he entered the Franciscan novitiate and was ordained a priest four years later. His preaching attracted great throngs at a time of religious apathy and confusion. He and 12 Franciscan brethren were received in the countries of Central Europe as angels of God. They were instrumental in reviving a dying faith and devotion. The Franciscan order itself was in turmoil over the interpretation and observance of the role of St. Francis. Through John's tireless efforts and his expertise in law, the heretical Fraticelli were suppressed and the spirituals were freed from interference in their stricter observance. He helped bring about a reunion with the Greek and Armenian churches, unfortunately only a brief arrangement. 
When the Turks captured Constantinople in 1453, he was commissioned to preach a crusade for the defense of Europe. Gaining little response in Bavaria and Austria, he decided to concentrate his efforts in Hungary. He, was, he led the army to Belgrade. Under the great general John Hunyadi, they gained an overwhelming victory and the siege of Belgrade was lifted. Worn out by his superhuman efforts, Capistrano was an easy prey to an infection after the battle. He died October 23rd, 1456. Our responsory, on your walls, Jerusalem, I have set my watchmen to guard you. On your walls, Jerusalem, I have set my watchmen to guard you. Day or night, they will not cease to proclaim the name of the Lord. I have set my watchmen to guard you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. On your walls, Jerusalem, I have set my watchmen to guard you. What you say of me does not come from yourselves. It is the Spirit of my Father speaking in you. Our Canticle of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born in the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord and prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. What you say of me does not come from yourselves. It is the spirit of my Father speaking in you. The response to our intercessions this morning is, teach us your ways, O God. Loving God in your kindness, you attend to our needs and answer our prayer. In hope we pray, teach us your ways, O God. Strengthen our leaders to promote human flourishing from, from conception to natural death and to protect the lives of the most vulnerable at home and abroad. In hope we pray, teach us your ways, O God. Uphold efforts to ensure safe, just, and fair elections. In hope we pray, teach us your ways, O God. Break the grip of prejudice and heal those anguished by self-hatred in hope we pray, teach us your ways, O God. For Sacred Heart Catholic Church, our priests, deacons, deacon candidates, our parish ministers, our parish staff, all those of you who donate, donate your time, talent, and treasure to our parish, but especially for our parishioners and those of our parishioners who are either ill or who have passed away. In hope we pray, Teach us your ways, O God. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And our prayer for protection in time of our COVID-19 pandemic. O Mary, you always brighten our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain while remaining steadfast in faith. O loving Mother, who know what we need, and we are confident you will provide for us as at Cana in Galilee. Intercede for us with your Son, Jesus, the Divine Physician, for those who have fallen ill, for those who are vulnerable, and for those who have died. Intercede also for those charged with protecting the health and safety of others 
and for those who are attending to the sick and seeking a cure. Help us, O Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who took upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, so as to lead us through the cross to the glory of the resurrection. Amen. Lord, you raised up St. John of Capistrano to give your people comfort in their trials. May your church enjoy unending peace and be secure in your protection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. May God show us mercy and grant us salvation through Jesus our peace. And may the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Have a blessed weekend. Please continue to take care of yourself and each other. And may God be praised.